All right. As always, here's the risk disclosure. Trading futures is risky. Know what you're doing before you do it, and you can lose all your money. Also, this live stream is not financial advice. It is for educational purposes only, and the live stream is not intended to copy my trades. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Jim, John, John Todd. <clears throat> Big day today. Big day. Fed funds rate coming out this afternoon. Morning, morning, doctor. So I'm fully anticipating not taking a trade. <clears throat> if something does come up, you know, maybe, but I'm not expecting much this morning. Market has barely moved overnight. I mean, it did move in a in a trend though. It's just overnight. I can see half of yesterday on my 50 tick chart. <laughs> But yeah, after the open or after midnight, London open, we had a run down from settlement to the dev chop back up to settlement. So we'll see. Maybe you can get something. We have on the 30 tick here, uh, back down to the deviation. There's a couple levels down here. This area right here may cause some hesitating but I mean yeah if we can get a nice little trend short here maybe you can get a pullback on its way down only thing is there was a couple let's see we got a short here a little pullback not much of anything that's just a wick on the 10 tick come down a little bit of choppiness on simplicity but if you look that's how you know price action and price movements not much right now because those chops bar chops on simplicity all it was was wicks on the 10 tick <laughs> so volumes really low yeah so I was just looking at volumes at 62,006 30 and climbing a little bit, but it's very slow. Morning, Vegas. Yeah. More than likely not taking a trade today. Definitely not trading later in the afternoon. What I've been doing, too, for the last little while, uh, like I was saying yesterday, this 25k account, I only trade pre-market while I'm streaming, but I have been trading all my other accounts in a afternoon session, like right after lunch, because uh, I do have a little bit of time then, and it's been going good, but I'm definitely not doing that today. <laughs> Morning, Richard. Yeah, I mean, it's really not worth it. I would definitely not be trading after the open today. Um, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to do an afternoon trade trading session. Right now, pre-market though, you can get a nice little trend and maybe get something. But it's not going to, you know, be a really nice run or anything. I mean, it's not going to be clean probably. So...
<laughs> actually got a really good deal. Um, it's an MSI and MSI Cortana, I think. And it was normally like it, it already went back up to thirteen hundred bucks, but I got it for eight ninety nine, so I thought it was a pretty good deal. And it's got a twenty six thousand benchmark. The only thing I do need to to add is some more RAM because it came with sixteen gigabytes, so it's upgradable to sixty four. So I will do that. And then the hard drive was five twelve gigabytes, so I will update upgrade that as well. But that's that's not expensive to do. But I love it. It's really, really good. And so like my desktop has the AMD Ryzen processor. But uh, Greg has mentioned the programmer for Apex that the Ninja charts run the best with the Intel processor. Run the fastest. So even a Intel processor with slightly less of a or less of a benchmark than AMD for the charts ninja trader purpose will run better. So so yeah that I feel like it's I mean it's really fast. It's smooth. Yeah, Greg's done all that testing. He said the best uh, processor um, was a that ran the best was the Intel. I think it was the i nine. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it has like a sixty two thousand benchmark, and it outperformed the Threadrippers at eighty to one hundred k benchmark. Because something about the way the cores are, yeah, Greg said this not long ago, but something about the way the Ninja Trader uses the different cores, I don't know. I don't know. That's, 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 uh, too much for me. I don't know all that, but just going off of what he said. <laughs> Yeah, but everything else, to my knowledge, the Threadripper and Ryzen is better. But for these charts, the Ninja Trader purpose purposes, he said Intel would be better. So I don't know. Yeah, uh, twelve. Yeah, I know they. I've heard Daryl say before, you want a minimum of twelve K. So that's good, John. That you got at least that. I mean, before I got my desktop, before I got my desktop, um, I was trading on a laptop that, <laughs> that had like 4,500 benchmark. It was, it was, it was crazy. Yeah, Richard. Um, I wanted to eventually do that also get a thread rip or something but but then i was looking up that that intel processor yesterday just to see and amazon, you can get it on amazon for 795 compared to like 5 grand for a thread ripper but if i had a thread ripper i'd be doing a lot more than just trading charts <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, I guess it depends what you want to do. You know, do you want your PC to be just for trading? And then, you know, of course, do some other things too. Or, yeah, I guess it depends what you really want to do with it. Yeah, something about how it utilizes the cores.
I mean, it's cheaper to go with the Intel versus the Threadripper. <laughs> Unless you want to do some, like, you know, awesome gaming or something else. Way cheaper. I was actually surprised because I knew what the Threadrippers cost. And then when I looked at that Intel to see it under a thousand bucks, I was like, man, okay. That's actually doable. Well, Thumper, right now, really nothing. <laughs> But yeah, um, so this, the main chart you're seeing, that's a 10 tick chart. That's the apex sniper system. All this, all the lines you see on here are going to be, it's what we call order prints. That's something based on the orders, the imbalance of orders that it's leaving. It's kind of like footprints, but displayed in a different way. So what I look for, the way I look for it, there's there's different, there's there's many different setups that you can take with the Apex system. But the setup that I take involves um, a trend. So this chart measures implied volatility with the uh, options indices and price action. So basically what I'm looking for is a trend that kind of looks like this, where both lines are the same color and angled the same direction, red for down, green for up. And as it's going in that trend, I'm looking for a pullback. That's all I'm looking for mainly. So as it's going, I'm looking for a pullback. And then while I'm looking for that, I'm using this chart to tell me when it pulls back, if there's something that I that's actually going to make it stop and continue in the direction I want, such as uh, HD, which is hidden divergence, meaning there's more volume and it didn't make it back as high. So chances are it'll continue or there's a level a strong level from the imbalance of orders that's telling me it, it it's going to reject and continue something like that and also look at this is a 30 tick chart and it tells me the same things but this chart it just means those those things are stronger so if I see something that I'm pulling back to or breaking out of here then that gives me extra confirmation. I'm using these charts as an extra confirmation that price will indeed pull back and stop there where I'm getting in and continue the direction I want. Also, I use this 50 tick chart to show me breakouts. Here's a perfect example. I look for four tick chop, I mean four bar chop and then a breakout. So every time I see four bars, I'm ready for to look for a breakout. And a breakout is when a bar closes one up or one down. And most of the time, when after four bars, when you get a bar, a breakout bar close, like this one closed up, most of the time you'll get at least one more bar close in that same direction. And that's where I look for a new trend. If this bar closes up, I look for a new trend entry and I'll run it up for at least 50 ticks. Most cases. Not, not all the time, but like back here, it's choppy. But you can see a lot of times after, after four bars or more, then you get a breakout. That's what I look for. That's that's really what I'm looking for mainly on everything. I mean, that's a very uh, quick version, I guess. <laughs> Oh, okay. I was wondering because I, as I was explaining that right now, I was looking right here and I was like, okay, that's a TBS, but I don't see it down there. So I'm glad you mentioned that.
Yeah. I mean, anytime I make a change to the charts here, I save it as a template. See, I got my, I have my own template because I don't like making all these changes <laughs> over and over if I have to start fresh. So like I have my 10 tick, my, my 20 tick. Yes. My 30 tick, my 50, my 60 to 40 levels. Like I save everything as a, uh, as a template. Once I make changes, if it's not standard, because I don't like going through all that and trying to remember what, what it was I was doing. Let's see. Yeah, here, here we go, right here. So if you go to TBS, under your indicators, then right here, require reversal bar, you gotta uncheck that. So I guess, because I haven't made any changes, I guess standard in the new, new toolkit, when you load it, it'll, you have to uncheck that. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to refresh everything. But even though I'm not expecting any trade. Oh, the TXF does too? Morning, Daniel. TXF. Well, the TXF, what needs to be changed in that one? Because that one does require reversal bar. Oh, required DR. Okay, got you. Right here. Required deviation reversal confirmation. Okay. So TX, TXF and TBS. All right, I'll remember that. Cool. All right. Morning, MJ. Yeah, I probably not gonna. I'm probably gonna cut it short today too. Um, this morning, cause no point of just sitting here too long <laughs> watching nothing. By the way, did y'all see that the 80% off got extended again? So they went ahead and extended it to next Wednesday, the 29th, uh, due to, you know, the issues with the trade of eight signups again, or not the signups, but the issues with trade of eight itself. And then, uh, there was also, you know, ton of market volatility and things like that. So they said, you know what, we're just going to go ahead and extend it for another week so 
Oh, and while we're here too, I don't know if y'all saw, I just posted last night in my group, the Apex Discounts group, that I'm going to give away 10, I'm doing a drawing for 10 of my uh, money management tool, 10 of them, I'm going to give away to 10 people, so y'all want to, if you don't have it, go ahead and do that. Sign up. I'll drop the link in here. <clears throat> but you want to be in the group if you're not. Because that's really mainly for crossing 5,000 members in the group. <laughs> Dang, 50%. I mean, that's about right for here too because we get paid on the, you know, 1099 as a self-employed, which is the highest taxed for us over here. Um, so you got to figure out how to offset that. Definitely for us here, you know, we have, we can include our subscription, all kinds of stuff to try to bring that down to write off. But outside of that, try to get some tax breaks. There's a link to You'll just go here, put your email and name. You'll and the drawing will be Tuesday, March twenty eighth. Where I'm gonna give away five of my money management tools, lifetime licenses. I'm sorry, ten. Give away ten of them, so if you're interested in that. Yeah, Nutty Bar. I have a, well, I have a video on how I set up this simplicity chart. The rest of them, these are our standard, the standard apex. Like I don't make any changes to them. Uh, other than a slight modification like the DR down here, but other than that, it's all using their template. But I do have a video on my YouTube of how I set this one up. Good morning, Lemming. Let a great trade get away. It's all right. Well... Today is a day that it's going to be okay to not take any trades. <laughs> Yeah, Richard, if you use your own capital here, you get a 60/40 taxed. So basically, it is it's not ta it, it is investment income, but what it is is 60% is taxed as long-term capital gains, which is a lower tax rate, and then 40% of it is short-term capital gains, which is it's a little it's higher than 
the long-term capital gains, but it's still relatively lower compared to, you know, other types of income. So you do get some tax advantage if you trade your own capital. That's for sure. That's right, doctor. My uh, Anytime I sign up for evaluation, uh, my monthly subscription to Apex, the $200 a month, um, the kinetic data feed, my computers, my monitors... All that. All that's getting deducted. <laughs> I mean, that's what I've done the last couple of years. Technically, I have not had uh, a, well, have not had a profit on my taxes. Uh, but I've only, this is my third, I just got into my third year, so. No, Richard, um, it's it's already like that. So whenever you get a tax statement from your broker, they and you do and you file your taxes, it's already it's it calculates for you. So like you don't have to sit there and calculate what's sixty percent and what's forty percent. Thankfully, <laughs> although I don't trade my own broker my own money anymore. I did for a little bit, but I stopped and I just use my trader funding accounts. Um, I am an LLC. Karen. Yeah. LLC. Nutty. Nutty bar. Yeah. To do that, the DR, I don't know if you know how, but it's super simple. Just go into your indicators. Okay, there you go. I was just uh, reading that. Go to indicators. And then right here, deviation reversal. And you may have to replay this video, but it's not hard, though. Just go to deviation reversal. Scroll all the way down. And where it says plots, you just open up this where it says value. Right under plots. And right here where it says match data series width, just check that box. And that's all you do. And then it'll do the DR this way. And that way it lines up exactly with each bar. Each one. That's the way I liked it. Yeah, for sure, uh, Richard. That's that's easiest on their end, too. Because um, you just, for accounting, you just send out how much you've paid out. And that's it. But also because... Um, the way most of these are set up, the only way they can really do the other 60, 40 tax is if you're in a live account. So that's literally the only way you can do it. But I believe even if you're in a live account, you still get, are getting taxed on a 1099, but that would be the only way you could do it. But then they'd have to make you a member of the company and this and that. Like, uh, there's another prop firm, um, Earn to Trade actually does that, where when you go get funded, you become a partner, and uh, you get the 60-40 the tax treatment. On the simplicity, you can make them thicker or thinner. The bars? Well, you know, like, if you hold... I don't know if this is what you're talking about or not. If you hold Alt and up or down, you can make the bars thicker or thinner. See? If you just hold Alt and arrow up or down. Yeah, 
doctor. I have uh, my LLC is for trading only. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty close to my monitor, so I don't need them too thick. I don't like them too skinny either, but... Oh yeah, John, it's so much easier just with your keyboard. That way you don't have to go into any anything and you can adjust it live and see what the way you like it. See, so like if you're looking at simplicity, this looks like oh, it was going long, now we might get a short. But then when you come back to the tentic, it's like, oh, that was just this little piece and now a potential short coming just right here, it's like, eh, this price actions. There's no way I'm jumping in this market right now. Yeah, and also, um, I mean, you could do this if you're trading under your personal name, too. There's no real advantage, to be honest, with using these funding accounts um, like Apex to go personal or LLC. Because um, the taxes for LLCs are passed through anyways. So there's no real advantage because it's like self-employed or LLC. Um I just like to, because I have other endeavors, I guess, because I'm in real estate. So my goal was, is to build up the, the trading, use trader trading funds to fund real estate. And because I want to do it that way, I want it to look like an LLC, have it basically an LLC that's funding another LLC for, for real estate versus, and that's the reason, main reason why I went. LLC, not so much for taxes or anything like that. Um, and then, you know, eventually build up business credit and stuff like that for the LLC as a profitable trading business. And then, uh, but it's all to, to fund real estate basically. And other investment opportunities that may come up. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and shut it down for the day. It's been uh, 36 minutes on here. <laughs> yeah, it really is, Richard. It could be like this for the whole entire day, though, until after that Fed funds rate at 2 p.m., and then you have, you know, Jay Powell always do the press conference afterwards. Uh, so, you know, the Q&A is the important part. As soon as he starts answering questions, that's when the market reacts. So I'd wait for all that for sure. Yeah, exactly. Silence before the storm. All right, y'all. I'll be back tomorrow. Try not to trade. If you do, be very careful. <laughs> Don't YOLO. Don't, uh, I mean, try not to anyways. <laughs> All right. See y'all trade well, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Take care.